Bell News Church. As I said, wherever you are, I'm just so glad to see you and welcome you here for worship. And I hope that you are, um, that your spirits rise and your hearts rejoice that we get to be together no matter where we are. And I want to invite you to take a look at the, what's happening. There are a number of things coming along that I just want to quickly point out to you. We're doing a litter pickup on Saturday from 10 to noon. If you can join us, that would be great. If you live somewhere else, go out and pick up some litter with us. Just do it from afar. We'll have takeout at St. Bartholomew's next Saturday so that these wonderful little pieces of communion will be blessed today during the Eucharist and available next Saturday. We also hope that that's a time when you can drop off a gift card. There's a brochure, there's a page in the bulletin about those gift cards that you can look over. I want to mention that on the 21st, Sheila Dolan Cam is going to do a cooking demonstration. I'm going to be here to tell you, Sheila is an outrageous cook. So this is really worth your time and your energy. I invite you to join her. And then I also want to quickly mention that we have some wonderful Advent wreaths that John DeVille's bag has made for the flea market. These are gorgeous. And if you would like one, just let us know. The proceeds go to support the flea market. And then finally, I just want to mention that Black Friday sale is off. Much to our regret, nevertheless, because of the rising numbers due to the pandemic, we felt it was only wise and safe that we continue to care for one another, and therefore the Black Friday sale is off. But there are going to be some other ways that we're going to do that, so just wait to hear that and be blessed accordingly. And now let us continue with our worship as we sing together, Eternal Ruler.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. reading from Zephaniah. Be silent before the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is at hand. The Lord has prepared a sacrifice. He has consecrated his guests. At that time, a search for the lamps. I will punish them on their way. Those who sit in their hearts, the Lord will not do good, nor will he do harm. Their wealth shall be plundered and their houses laid waste. Though they build houses, they shall not inhabit them. Though they plant vineyards, they shall not drink wine from them. The great day of the Lord is near, near and hastening fast. The sound of the day of the Lord is bitter. The warrior cries aloud there. That day will be a day of wrath, a day of distress and anguish, a day of ruin and devastation, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of trumpet blast and battle cry against the fortified cities and against the lofty battlements. I will bring such distress upon people that they shall walk like the blind because they have sinned against the Lord their blood shall be poured out like dust and their flesh like dung. Neither their silver nor their gold will be able to save them on the day of the Lord's wrath. In the fire of his passion, the whole earth shall be consumed. For a full, a terrible end he will make of all the inhabitants of the earth. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people.
reading from First Thessalonians. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you, for you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light and the children of the day. We are not, we are not of the night or of darkness. So then let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Jesus said, It is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. 
After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents who came forward saying, Master, you handed it over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trusty slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent who came forward saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Have you, here you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave. You knew, did you? that I reap, I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter, then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers. And on my return, I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the 10 talents. For to all those who have more will be given and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. So, can you all hear me now? Is that better? I hope. Yeah, maybe, maybe not. Well, we're having some technical problems, so your patience and your good humor today. Oh, evidently we're okay. So, nevertheless, I appreciate your patience and good humor, uh, and trust God has good humor and patience as well. I am delighted today to welcome back to our pulpit our lay preacher, Joe Twist. Um, Joe has um, a wonderful calling to this ministry, and so we are blessed today by having his presence in the pulpit this morning. In the name of God, the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sustainer, Amen. What, what, what are the talents that we admire? To paint, to draw, to sing or dance, to run fast, to play the piano, to throw a curveball. How about hitting a curveball? These may be wonderful talents for the 21st century, but they aren't what Jesus was referring to in the scriptures that were read so beautifully this morning by Neva. To us, talent means an ability. A gift which we or someone else possesses but it definitely did not mean that in biblical times let me explain a talent in first century Israel was a sum of money and not an insignificant sum of money estimates are that a talent was equivalent to 20 years wages now, the average per capita income in Maryland is around $40,000 per year. So you can do the math, and you'll realize that $800,000 is a substantial amount of money. Each talent was equal to $800,000. But in this parable of the talents, it's very important that you don't fall into this pitfall. 
It is not a matter of rewards for service. This is not quid pro quo. God does not operate in a this for that world. And I can tell you that I'm very thankful that God does not involve herself in a, in a this for that world. Now let's turn to the inevitable question. What are the talents in our experience? What do talents mean to us as we read the scriptures? Now listen to the first verse. It is, if, it is as if a man going on a journey entrusted his property to his stewards. Now I've changed the word to stewards as opposed to slave because it's really a better, it's a better translation from the original Greek. The focus here needs to be on his property. Property is another word for talents. The talents are the owner's property. They are God's property. Now let's listen closely to the second verse. To one he gives five talents, another two talents, to another one, one, each according to their abilities. That's the key point right here. Each according to the ability what the owner was doing here was trusting them with these talents. The scripture clearly implies that each of these stewards is to invest these talents in the best of their ability in order for that to result in a, re, in a gain or potentially a loss. Now, the, the talent can be invested, that is, risk, with the possibility, as I said, of a gain or a loss. The steward's decision to risk or not to risk is their decision. They can choose to take the risk, as the first two stewards did, or they can choose not to take the risk, as the third steward did. Lastly, the investment must be made wholly for the benefit of the Lord, benefit of the owner, the talent is not given to the students, to the, to the stewards, for their own use. It remains the property of the Lord. And there's no promise that any of the stewards are going to share in any way in the profit, or that matter, the loss. Now, before I share a couple of stories, I want to recap this. The talents belong to the Lord. The talents are given to each according to their abilities. To risk or not to risk the talent is the choice of the steward. The investment, of course, is made totally on behalf of the owner. And the clear expectation from the owner is for each of the stewards to take their talents, again, each according to their abilities, and to attempt to do the best they can in expanding these talents. That's the message that God is giving to us. You follow me? Okay. There was a boy by the name of Paul, he's since passed on, who had a very difficult time reading. To be honest, he could hardly read at all. At the time, there were no such things as dyslexia or reading disabilities. He just was considered to be a bit slow because he couldn't read. But his mom and dad, especially his mom, continued to constantly read to him. And it was through this diligent reading that he began to learn and learn and learn about all these things that he couldn't learn by reading on his own. He was always behind in grade levels in terms of reading. He was a good math student, good in science. He was a terrific athlete. And he was a terrific leader. But reading? Not so much. In fact, from the time he was six years old, he wanted to be a doctor. But you know, his high school advisors told his parents, you know, you should maybe consider some alternative career options for him because we're not sure that he can make it into college. But he had, did not give up on his dream and neither did his parents. He was able to get in college, but after his first year, he went on probation. And he saw that dream beginning to fade. But he raised his grades a bit. 
And in his last year of college, he applied to medical school. He applied to a lot of medical schools, and he got into one. But it really doesn't make much difference because all you need to go to is one school anyhow. Now, I have no idea what his ranking was in medical school. I probably wasn't within the top percent, but you know when he graduated, they called him doctor. He became a pioneering physician in this field of neonatology. You know what neonatology is? That's when you, these little itty bitty babies, but these little itty bitty babies have serious medical conditions. He would joke to me, he'd say, you know, if I ever saw a patient that was more than five pounds or a little baby that was more than five pounds, I just wouldn't know what to do with it. But over his approximate 40 year career, he cared for, and I dare say with God's grace, he saved many tens of thousands of babies. And then in addition to that, he also trained neonatologists all throughout the country. Probably hundreds of physicians were trained by him. Did he ever learn to, did he ever learn to read well? Well, not too well, but he was able to get by. But Paul accepted the talents given to him by God. He used those talents to the best of his ability. He took the risk of reaching past his disabilities and he used it to the service of God's healing work. Paul trusted God. I grew, up in, I grew up in western New York, and I still spend as much of the summer there as I can. And there's an organization in the, near there that I've come to know for years called the Resource Center. Now, the Resource Center provides educational and training just individuals in the community of Jamestown, New York, that have intellectual and developmental disabilities. They provide simple manufacturing jobs in this facility. They've been doing work for a long time with the government. And right now they are backlogged, manufacturing masks and gowns for the epidemic. I recently met a person at the Resource Center by the name of Henry Wesley. Henry has quite a story. He's a glowing example of how he took his gifts, his talents, and he's using them today to advance the glory of God. We had our conversation, we had our conversation through a computer because he has a Dynavox communication device of which allows Henry to speak because he doesn't speak verbally. But don't worry, don't worry at all. Henry really knows how to communicate. He was born in 1945 with cerebral palsy and smile retardation, and his parents dropped him off at a state institution when he was four years old. Can you imagine dropping your kid off at four years old? He languished there for 23 years until the press brought and exposed all the horrors of that facility. He then moved on to another facility, which he told me was actually pretty good, and that closed and in 1987, he went to the Resource Center, and now he's married and lives around three miles away from the Resource Center, and he is not only a client there, but he's also a worker there. And at the Resource Center, Henry took a tremendous interest in computers, and he's become proficient in such a way that he manages a lot of the inventory issues at the Resource Center. He tells me he enjoys communicating with his friends via the internet and now with his Dynavox machine, he can have real conversations with many, many people. He also meets monthly with the new employees at the Resource Center to tell them about his life and to educate them on how they should interact with individuals with disabling conditions. He's a guest lecturer at the local community college and in collaboration with that professor they're writing the story of Henry's life right now. At first glance, it would not seem as though Henry was abundantly gifted. But Henry accepted the talents given to him by God. And he used them like Paul did to the best of his abilities, reaching beyond his disability, using it in the service of God. Henry 
trusted God. Now back to the scripture. When their stewards returned to the owner, it was clear from the expectation that the owner was to have them take their talents according to their abilities once again and to do the best they could. And when the accounting took place, the owner said, you have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your owner. Enter into the kingdom of God. That's what he told to those two people that took their talents and risked them, and those two people trusted in God. The, true, the, the truth here, the key word here is trust. This is the message that Jesus is telling to his followers. This is the message that Jesus is telling to us today. This is not an unclear message. God says, trust in me. The first two stewards trusted, and they were rewarded, not because of a gain or a failure or loss. They were, they were rewarded because they trusted. I get it, though. Sometimes it's not easy to trust. Sometimes people are not trustworthy. And sometimes people betray your trust. But the wonderful part about God, the beautiful part about God, is that God will never walk away from you. God will not turn away from you. You can always trust God. And I think about the members of our community, the St. Peace community, and not do I only see abundant gifts, but I see how you trust to take these gifts and utilize them to the glory of God. I see a community that's taking these gifts and utilizing them to the benefit of so many other people. I see 40 West. I see Hope Harbor. I see the choir. I see the Sunday school. I see the kitchen crew. Outreach. So many other ways. And today, today, I'm inviting each of us to look at ourselves and ask two questions. Two questions. One, what are our God-given talents? And, and, and how are we trusting God so that we will be willing to risk using our talents to advance the glory of God? Each Sunday at the end of our service, we remind ourselves that God is calling us to take righteous risks. God is trusting us to take righteous risks. God has each given us a choice. What will we choose? I'm hoping we will trust and be willing to accept that call by seeking and serving Christ in all people. Amen. And now I invite you And now I invite you wherever you are, if you are able to stand and let us reaffirm our faith in this God we can trust in as we say together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We 
believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are found in your service bulletin. Brothers and sisters, in love, let us encourage one another and build each other up. Lord God, you have destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen your church to confidently share your gospel throughout the world. Have mercy upon us, O Lord. Lord God, have mercy on all who are shown contempt and fear and scorn. Hear the cries of the needy and lift up the downtrodden and lowly. Have mercy upon us, O Lord. Have mercy. Lord God, you rule the day and the night. Bless and sustain the works of your hands. Restore your creation. Have mercy upon us, O Lord. Have mercy. Lord God, you are enthroned in the heavens. May we trust not our own schemes, but lift up our eyes to you. Lead and guide the leaders of our city, state, and nation in all justice and truth. Have mercy upon us, O Lord. Have mercy. Lord God, you have blessed us with your marvelous works. We give thanks, remembering those we name at this time. He thanks for my birthday yesterday. Zachary and Erica and Nicholas. Did you have a prayer to ask? Scientists. For my husband. Thank you, family. Said one. Oh. Birthday of Lillian McElroy. Have mercy upon us, O oh Lord. Have mercy. Lord God, you are a merciful God. Hear the prayers of those who cry out to you for help. Be present with the suffering in their waking and their sleeping. Remembering Lucy Marshall, Doris Hoy, Vince Marsiglia, Donna Cartwright, Janet Churchill, David Snyder, Shirley Nathan Pulliam, Yvetta Dupree, Tony Creek, Mike Knudsen, Lib Shibley, Lillian Thomas, Celia Vishmael, Ray Ziegler, Larry Brown, Sandra De Silva, Tiger Watts, Peter Griffin, John Davis, Young Sam, Michelle Haney Madison, Kate Henshaw, Mary Warfield, Amanda Harris and Marilyn and Ben Smith, Aodell House, Tom Cover, Jim Wright, Bev Lore, Kathleen DeVale, David McClellan, Scott Armentrout, Dana Chevashevsky, Larry Butcher, John White, Steve Sprechter, 40 West Assistance and Referral Center clients, Hope Harbor Partner families, those affected by the coronavirus, and any others we name at this time. My mom. I pray for my mother, my aunt, my two. Firstly, Denise Matai. Pray for me. Uncle Joe. And my friend Liz. Pat Hines. Susan. Betty Lee. 
Renee yep. Wilson. All those people who are sick. Renee Wilson. Stray in Los Cook. The Schrader family. Have mercy upon us, O oh Lord. Have mercy. Lord God, your son Jesus died for us that, me, what, that we might dwell in your light forever. Give to the dying and the dead the hope of salvation, remembering Tyson and Sally Janey, Norman Phillips Richter Jr., Glenn C. Whiteman, Harold Lewis Wrightson, Jr., Josiah Baron Cutchen, Ann Cook Wilson Johnson, Gerald Lyles, Martha Nestor, and any others we name at this time. Bell Moore, Sr. Folks, Teresa. Elizabeth Alexander. Kenny Lee. Lee. Johnson. Yeager. Alamati. Alice Jelena. Gwen West, Pearly Ball, Lily Walker, Esther McCready, and Dennis Jones. and Ann. James and Henrietta Morton. And Barbara Pullian. D. Schrader. Have mercy upon us, O Lord. Holy God, in your tenderness and compassion, hear our prayers. May they be to you as a precious offering from the treasure of our hearts. We present them to you because you are faithful and your love endures forever and ever. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. God of all mercies, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. And now, my sisters and my brothers, may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. With you. Peace, everyone. Peace. 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 Peace to all of you. Peace. Peace, Peace Anthony. Peace. 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 Peace, 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 Peace,
Don't thirst Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Carol Burnside, peace be with you. Thank you. Peace be with you. Thank you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace now to continue our worship as we share a meal. The early, earliest church, the community gathered together for a meal, and it was called the agape meal, the opportunity to break some bread and to share something to drink. And that's what we do here at St. Bartholomew's this week, as we share in that very earliest meal, long before they ever understood about what the sacrament means. But also on this day, we will be blessing those very small communion kits so that we can share the sacrament as well next week, so that we'll have takeout at St. B's on Saturday. Next Sunday is the last Sunday of Pentecost. It's the end of the church year, and what a great way to end the year, being able to share both communion in sacrament, but also in the agape meal. And so that'll be available next Saturday. But now I hope that you do have something to eat and something to drink so that we can be blessed by sharing a meal together with one another. And now, the Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. All thanks and praise are yours at all times and in all places, our true and loving God. Through Jesus Christ, your eternal word, the wisdom from on high by whom you created all things, you laid the foundations of the world, and enclosed the sea when it burst out from the womb. You brought forth all creatures of the earth and gave breath to humankind. Wondrous are you, Holy One of blessing. All you create is a sign of hope for our journey. And so as the morning stars sing your praises, we join the heavenly beings and all creation as we shout with joy. people to yourself as a light to the nations. You delivered them from bondage and led them to a land of promise. Of your grace, you gave Jesus to be human, to share our life, to proclaim the coming of your holy reign and give himself for us a fragrant offering. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, you have freed us from sin brought us into your life, reconciled us to you, and restored us to the glory you intend for us. We thank you that on the night before he died for us, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you, do this for the remembrance of me. 
After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, said the blessing, gave it to his friends and said, drink this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. And so, remembering all that was done for us, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection, and the ascension, longing for Christ's coming in glory and presenting to you these gifts your earth has formed and human hands have made, we acclaim you, O Christ. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Christ Jesus, come in glory. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine. That they may be to us the body and blood of your Christ. Grant that we, burning with your Spirit's power, may be a people of hope, justice, and love. Giver of life, draw us together in the body of Christ, and in the fullness of time, gather us with blessed Bartholomew and all your people into the joy of our true eternal home. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, we worship you, our God and Creator, in voices of unending praise. Blessed are you, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia! And now, I invite us to also do our prayers over whatever you have to eat and whatever you have to drink that we might have the blessing of sharing a meal in communion with one another. So together, let us pray. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God. You bring forth bread from the earth and make the risen Lord to be for us the bread of life. Grant that we who daily seek the bread which sustains our bodies may also hunger for the food of everlasting life. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now let us pray over whatever it is you have to drink. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, creator of the fruit of the vine. Grant that we who share this drink, which gladdens our hearts, may share forever the new life of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now I invite you to the galley view so that you can see how we all share it together. And let us remember that these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you.
Now I invite us to offer our prayer of thanksgiving together. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God. Oh, sorry, sorry. Let's try it again. <laughs> In unison, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. I remember your death, Lord Christ. I proclaim your resurrection. I await your coming in glory. And since I cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart, cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Now the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer, bless you and keep you this day and evermore. Amen. Amen. As we go forth into the world, refreshed and renewed, we reaffirm our commitment to our vision and mission as a congregation. We will, with God's help, be a vibrant faith community that is a blazing beacon of God's transforming love in the world. God is calling us to take righteous risk. Let us accept this call that we will respond by seeking and serving Christ in all people. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us go forth to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Okay, hi, Mr. Michael. Hi, Mr. Michael. Bye bye. I just want to take it by Bye. Bye bye. There we go. Bye, bye, darling. Hi, Mr. Marty. Hi, Mr. Marty. At this cafe. There they go, Michael. Hi, Mike. Hi, Yeah. Hello. So can we have a reading? Because I'm sitting on here talking to people and everybody. Hi, guys. Hi.